Hi, I'm Kathy. In this lesson, we'll analyze the graphs of polynomial functions. Our specific objectives are cubic functions and other functions of odd degree, quartic functions and other functions of even degree, extrema, end behavior, x-intercepts or real zeros, comprehensive graphs, curve fitting, and polynomial models. Let's start with the definition of a polynomial function. A polynomial function of degree n in the variable x is a function defined by p of x equals a sub n x to the n plus a sub n minus 1 x to the n minus 1. And the pattern continues until we get to a sub 1 x plus a sub 0. Each a sub i is a real number. a sub n specifically is not 0. And n is a whole number. We call a sub n the leading coefficient, and the degree of the polynomial is n. Well, let's look at a specific one, a cubic or third degree polynomial. A third degree polynomial function is called a cubic function. Here's an example of a cubic. p of x equals 3x cubed minus 4x squared plus 5x minus 10. Now the graph of a cubic is going to fit into one of these four pictures. It's either going to be relatively smooth and always decreasing, or always increasing, or perhaps have this behavior or this behavior. And we'll look at ways to determine which of these graphs might fit the function shortly. A fourth degree polynomial is called a quartic function. An example of a quartic is something like f of x equals 5x to the fourth minus 3x plus 12. Now the graph of a quartic is going to fit one of these four pictures. It may be smooth and completely turned upside down or right side up. Or it may uh, have this shape. These dashed lines indicate that the behavior is smooth but irregular on this interval. Smooth but irregular behavior occurs on that interval. The things to note are, for this fourth degree polynomial, that at both ends of the polynomial in each of these graphs, the behavior of the function is the same. Let's look at an example. What we want to do here is consider the graphs shown below. I have a function called f of x, and here's its graph. And I have a function called g of x, and this is its graph. Here's what we want to do with these pictures. And you may need to come back to this as you try to answer the questions. What we want to do is name and classify the local extreme points of f, name and classify the local extreme points of g, and describe the absolute extreme points for f and g. Well, let's look back at the graphs and establish what extreme points are. Extreme points are points that are what could be called local minimum values or maximum values. For f, the extreme points are the point a, b, e, h, and c, d. For g, the extreme points are the points j, k, and m, n. Well, let's be real specific as we classify these. The points a, b, and e, h are local minimum values. I'm going to abbreviate that min. For f, the point cd is a local maximum value. For a function g, jk is the local minimum value. And mn is the local maximum value. Now the other thing we want to establish for each of these functions is whether it has and what is the local, or excuse me, absolute uh, minimum. If you look at function f, the absolute minimum value is the point a, b. The actual absolute, uh, excuse me, the ab absolute minimum point is a, b. The absolute minimum value is b, abbreviating absolute minimum value for function f is b. Now function f has no absolute max since its range extends to positive infinity. Function g has neither an absolute min or absolute max because its range is from negative infinity 
to positive infinity. Well, let's continue our analysis of polynomial functions discussing something called end behavior. End behavior of polynomial functions. Suppose that ax to the n is the dominating term of a polynomial function p of odd degree. If a is positive, so odd degree is important to note here, n is an odd number. If a is positive, then as x approaches infinity, this set of symbols means x gets close to infinity, the function p of x approaches infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, the function approaches negative infinity. In that case, or therefore, the end behavior of the graph is of the type shown in the following figure. And here's a figure that represents that end behavior. The degree of the polynomial is odd. The leading coefficient is positive. Here's x going to positive infinity, the function going to positive infinity. x going to negative infinity, the function going to negative infinity. The set of symbols we use are symbols as I've indicated here. Well, let's continue with this end behavior discussion. If a is less than 0 and n is odd degree, then as x goes to positive infinity, p of x goes to negative infinity. And as x goes to negative infinity, p of x goes to positive infinity. Therefore, the end behavior of the graph as of the type shown. I want to point out again that n is an odd degree polynomial. This time, the leading coefficient is negative. The graph's shape is roughly as, as shown. Remember that this dot, dot, dot indicates smooth but irregular behavior. The symbol for this type of end behavior is as indicated here. Well, let's talk about even degree polynomials in end behavior. Suppose that ax to the n is the dominating term of a polynomial function p of even degree. So now n's an even number. If a is positive, greater than 0, then as the absolute value of x goes to infinity, p of x goes to infinity. What that means is if, um, well, let me show you with a graph. It's easier to see, actually. Therefore, the end behavior of the graph is of the type shown in the figure. And let me illustrate that statement. What you see here, and I should indicate that n is even and a is greater than 0 for this particular polynomial. The end behavior is that as x goes to negative infinity and x goes to positive infinity, the function goes to positive infinity. Again, remember this is smooth but irregular behavior. And here's a symbol we use to represent this end behavior. There's a second statement having to do with end behavior for an even degree polynomial, and that's this. If the leading coefficient is negative, then as x goes to positive infinity or negative infinity, the function goes to negative infinity. Therefore, the end behavior is of this type. And here's the graph. I want to indicate here n is even, the degree of the polynomial is even, but the leading coefficient is negative. And the symbol that represents that end behavior is a symbol as I've drawn here. Let's use these statements for an example. Use an end behavior diagram to describe the end behavior of the function p equals square root 5 x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x plus 4. Well, this is an odd degree polynomial. n is odd. And the leading coefficient square root of 5 is positive. So the end behavior diagram is going to look like this. Well, why don't you try a problem? Here's what I want you to do. When you're done working the problem, pause the video to check your work. Here's the problem. Use an end behavior diagram to describe the end behavior of the function. p of x equals negative x to the fourth plus x to the fifth minus pi x to the sixth minus x plus 3. Pause the video and try this one. Well, let's see how you did. Be careful when you look at this polynomial not to identify negative x to the fourth as the leading coefficient. This 
is the leading coefficient, the coefficient of highest degree. The degree of this term is 6, so the degree of the polynomial is even. The leading coefficient is negative pi. A is less than 0. With this combination, our end behavior diagram is this. Well, let's continue by talking about x-intercepts of a polynomial function. Number of x-intercepts, or real zeros of a polynomial function. A polynomial function of degree n will have, at most, n x-intercepts, or real zeros. Let's use this to work at an example. Consider the function y equal negative 2x cubed minus 14x squared plus 2x plus 84. And here's its graph with some significant points labeled. Let's just point out the end behavior, by the way. It's odd degree with a negative leading coefficient. And so the end behavior that we know about fits. The points that are labeled are this x-intercepts negative 6, then negative 3.19, then 2.19. The y-intercept is labeled as 84. This point here is a local minimum. Its coordinates are negative 4.72, negative 27.02. The y-intercept is also a local maximum. Its coordinates are 0, 84, although labeled right here as a y-intercept. For this function, here's what we want to do. First of all, we want to determine or write down the domain. Now, you need to refer back to the graph, but if you look at the domain, you'll see that the graph extends from negative infinity to positive infinity. We want to determine all local minimum points. Well, there was that one local minimum point at negative 4.72, negative 27.02. Determine all local maximum points and tell if any is an absolute maximum. Well, there was that one local maximum that was also the y-intercept. It's not an absolute maximum since the range of the function was negative infinity to infinity. So let me write down, it's not an absolute maximum. Let's continue by writing down the range of the function. If you look back at the graph, you'll see that the range is from negative infinity to infinity. We want to determine all the intercepts. The x-intercepts, there are three of them are the points negative 6, negative 3.19, and 2.19. And there's one y-intercept, I'm going to abbreviate for that, and it was, or is, the point 84. Now when you want to give the interval or intervals over which the function is increasing. The function is increasing from its local min to its local max. And we describe that using the x-coordinates from negative 4.72 to 0. That's an interval. We want to give the interval or intervals over which the function is decreasing. Now it's decreasing from negative infinity to the local min, negative 4.72, and from the local max, 0 to positive infinity. Those are the intervals over which the function is decreasing. Well, in this lesson, we've analyzed polynomial functions. Be sure to work lots of exercises from your textbook for practice.